Keep your seatbelt fastened low and tight and remain in your seat when the seatbelt sign is on. Hunting Alaska has been a dream for as long as I can remember. Having been there once before on a swampy Yukon Delta moose hunt, I got a taste of what Alaska has to offer. After two years of planning and saving up, I couldn't believe we were actually going. This time, we would find ourselves tucked up against the Brooks Range in the Arctic Circle hunting caribou. The beauty, excitement, the unknowns, and the vastness of Alaska had seemed to draw us back, and it is truly something you have to experience to fully understand. Upon arriving in Kotzebue, we met up with Mark Helsing and his buddy Jared Ernest. We all were super excited to get this adventure underway. After months of planning and anticipation, I couldn't believe we were finally here. From the moment we boarded our flight in Boise, jumped into the Beaver float plane in Kotzebue, and flew over the most spectacular landscape I have ever laid eyes on. The trip was perfect, and the planning was falling into place seamlessly, with no surprises, no hiccups, yep, a true Alaska a dream hunt. Yeah, right, this is Alaska, and one thing I've learned about Alaska is she makes her own time. You can pretty much throw your expected timing or timetables out the window. At home when the weather is bad, we just go. In Alaska when it is bad, you're stuck in a tent, a motel room, or whatever. We found ourselves stuck in Kotzebue for two days due to weather keeping the beaver grounded. That caused a bottleneck of other hunters in front of us, either waiting to get picked up in the field or taken out. For sure not going out today, and then hopefully if weather holds, we'll go out tomorrow. Okay, and then what time will, uh, will be the plan for tomorrow? They're getting people out in the field today, because people are backed up from yesterday, so they can't get us out today, even though they're, even though they're flying. Got four people out today? Of course, it's Alaska. We're stuck here because of weather, so we got an extra day here in Cots. Uh, so we're going around town, going to check out the museum, and then we're going to have a cribbage tournament. So basically, we're tomorrow's our catch-up day. We're going to get you guys out. It is what it is, and we are trying to make the best of it. I'll, you know, the guys are coming out with some animals, but keep in mind, we've only probably seen. 10 or 15,000 come across the brook range at this point. Out of 250? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we just got somewhat bad news. A couple hunters rolled into camp and they were not seeing very much caribou. One, one group saw 60 caribou, the other one saw six in a seven day hunt, which is awful. awful. <laughs> <laughs> After being reminded of the realities of Alaska, we were excited to get in the field and start hunting. 
Well, we're splitting up into two teams. One team's going on the far side, the really easy to get to side, and the other one's gonna have to hike a long ways. And we're just gonna glass, glass for caribou, and hopefully Come somebody will see something and then hopefully kill about two or so. Three, three, three wouldn't be bad. So it sounds like it should be a pretty simple task because there's so many caribou flowing through here. <laughs> Not really at all. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a great day anyways. So the north wind, kind of coming out of the northeast, finally started this morning. And everybody says those caribou aren't gonna move until that north wind hits. And so, rumor has it, caribou are still on the north slope, which is probably 40 miles, 30? 30, 30 miles over the, over the other side. So we're just hoping that eventually, they start migrating and we're gonna see a bunch here. I think we're gonna go back to camp. It's a couple miles back. Get some camp time, special moments, you know, talk about our feelings and stuff. And uh, regroup and maybe come back out later tonight and see if something's moving around finally. We're still waiting for 200,000 to come over these mountains. So any moment, I'm sure. This morning no caribou spotted we're gonna break up into two groups and I think one's going across the pond and one's going up the canyon hopefully we knock down two today and two tomorrow and it's good to go <laughs> <laughs> well of course we're going to the south because we saw a bunch of yesterday and as we're hiking out there there's a bunch back to the north where we've been for the last couple days so there's like 25 there so now we got to make a decision of Steve and Tyler and Mark are supposed to go there, but we might go cut them off. Makes no sense. Possible to go. I mean, wide open. So we're sitting here. I glass up two wolves, and as we're glassing them up, uh, Justin's like, hey, there's a sow and a cub right below them. So, literally, in the same view, you can see a sow, a cub, and two white wolves. And one of the wolves is just giant. So, and then we get a herd like 30 caribou here, and then a couple of bulls up top. But we don't have a gun. This is awesome. Can you good bulls? Dude, the four were giant bulls that came off the top okay. of the morning. This is where it's happening. We should have had our tents right here. We'd have had wolves, grizzlies, and caribou walking by our tents all night. We got no sleep, probably. <laughs> It's like a two and a half hour walk here through like the worst muddy bog marsh ever. Stick the tent down for the first bit time. <laughs> Got more rocks. How exciting! I love the Arctic. 
nature is neat. <laughs> I literally stepped out of my tent, kind of got straight, and it blew me all the way into my side pole, just like crashing into my tent. It's like, oh, whoa. Here we go, day number something in Alaska. Two tags to fill. Should be a piece of cake. Just hike like 15, 20 miles a day. Shoot a couple and just bring them back. This is what I live for. It's like the two minute drill. It's where the men are separated from the boys. Uh, we got a group of caribou, mostly cows and small bulls, right up here in this little saddle. We got a small bull kind of back in that back saddle. Strike force! <laughs> My back is just totally fried. <sighs> I don't know either. Like right now, I'm just like, I need like a goo. I'm like getting all shaky. Not a single caribou in sight. We can see five miles in all directions. Um, so we got about a three hour hike back to the camp. So back there right at dark. It's a bummer. I didn't get a single opportunity on this whole trip. It's been it's been a really tough hunt, but it's been fun hanging out with everybody. If it wasn't hanging out with everybody, it would have been one crappy trip. How am I gonna get back up? It seems as though Alaska has its own hunting spectrum. From really bad to really good. Lenny's hunt fell into the not so great part of the Alaska spectrum. Between limited days, weather, and very few caribou, he had no opportunities to even put his stock together. I, on the other hand, fell into the amazingly awesome side of the Alaskan adventure spectrum on day one. From crawling out of my tent that morning to late that night, it'll be etched in my mind and my memories forever. Jason just spotted a good bull on a skyline coming kind of up on this hill. Um, Really nice bull, one of the better bulls we've seen because we've only seen two today. <laughs> Me and the two rifle guys and camera guy, are gonna, I'm taking a bow to a gunfight. <laughs> 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 but, but hopefully, maybe when we get over there, these guys might spot something else. Seems like they're out moving around a little bit. Maybe they'll spot some dumb one for me just wandering around aimlessly. But we're gonna get one shot. Another creek crossing, waiter change. And then getting down where we're out of their sight and come up the back side of that. I knew, you know, their side healing last time we saw them there, so I knew I had to get up above them. So I just walked as hard as I could to get, make sure I was above them when they side healed around this ridge. And the other guys stayed a little behind. Pretty soon, I could hear footsteps on the rocks, and Justin got set up on the camera below. Mark was below, and me and Jared were up here, and they came walking around, um, two bulls and two cows that we had spotted earlier, just like we thought.
Hotel is probably, I'd say probably the coolest hunt of my life, honestly, thus far. That he was really looking down at, at Justin and Mark, which was good because it gave him a lot of opportunity for me to draw and take my time to make sure everything was right. And uh, split 50, 60 pan, right where it needed to be. And um, here lies my caribou. For years to me, Alaska seemed like an almost foreign or out of reach destination to hunt. It truly is doable and no doubt unforgettable. Like nowhere I've been before, it reminds me of just how small we are.